The very last homework question of my College Physics 1 class is, two train whistles have identical frequencies of 1.47 times 10 squared hertz. When one train is at rest in the station and the other is moving nearby, a commuter standing on the stage, station platform hears beats with a frequency of 8 beats per second when the whistles operate together. What are the two possible speeds that the moving train can have? So, the first thing we have to do is we have to figure out what the frequencies, the possible frequencies uh, of that the observer is hearing, and so with the frequency of beats, um, you can you can say that uh, there's there's the fir there's the absolute value. The frequency of the beats is determined by the absolute value of frequency one minus frequency two, and so because this is absolute value, in order to take away this absolute value sign, we have to put a plus or minus. Um, on the outside. And so what happens is we can have the frequency of the beats is equal to frequency 1 minus frequency 2 or or the frequency of the beats is equal to frequency 2 minus frequency 1. Whenever the absolute value is taken out you have to set up both equations for it to work. And then you have to solve for frequency 2 in both cases. So frequency 2 is equal to, you can have frequency 1 plus the frequency of the beats, or you can have frequency 2 is equal to frequency 1 minus the frequency of the beats. The, the problem tells us that frequency 1, or the, the frequency that, the, uh, that both trains have on their, on their uh, whistles, is 147 hertz. And so uh, train 1 is sitting still, so we know that he is at 147 hertz, We've got 8 beats per second. So I would say um, one, or 147 plus 8, and I would say 147 minus 8. And that's the two possible frequencies that train 2 can have in order to create 8 beats per second. So it could be 155 hertz, 155 hertz, or it could be 139 hertz. And so um, now we can use the Doppler equation and we can solve for both of these frequencies using the Doppler equation and that will give us both possible speeds. Okay, so I'm just going to move some stuff up out of the way now that we've got our possible frequencies and we're going to write the Doppler equation in here so the frequency of the observer is equal to the, the frequency of the source times, uh, times the velocity of the sound propagating through whatever medium it is, in this case air, plus the velocity of the observer, divided by the velocity of sound minus the velocity of the source. So that's an O, that's an S. And we want to solve for the velocity of the source. We want to know how fast the train is moving. And so uh, when you work that out algebraically, the velocity of the source, because this uh, velocity of the observer is zero, he's standing still, it simplifies things, and I can say the velocity of the source is equal to the frequency of the, of the observer times the velocity minus the frequency of the source times the velocity, all of that divided by divided by the frequency of the observer. And so in in both cases we're going to put we're going to plug in a velocity of 345 that's my magic velocity when we don't know what the outdoor temperature is. So we would say the frequency of the observer we will we'll pr plug in uh, um, 155 first and find out what that possible speed could be. So we'd say 155 times times 345 minus uh, minus the frequency of the source, it's always 147, so 147 times 345, and divide that by the frequency of the observer again, which is 155, and we should get a positive 17.80645, and that would be meters per second, so coming towards, since the number is positive, we know that the source is moving towards the observer, and so it's a um, 17.80645, 80645 moving towards the station and that would give us the 155 hertz uh, frequency. Now we can plug in this uh, the same same thing only we'll cross out 155 we'll put in 139 cross out 155 plug in 139 and in this case you would get a velocity of the source equal to negative 19.8561 
meters per second, and since it's negative, we know that the, the source is moving away from the observer, so you get 19.8561 meters per second moving away from the station.